Hey guys, it's me, the Dom Fanatic, and welcome to a very late week two of the Baby League. Um, apologies, this and week three are going to be late, um, mainly because I've just got back from holiday about mm, two days ago now. Um, and without knowing, my parents have come to stay with me for the week, and they had the lounge renovated uh, yesterday. So uh, I had to unplug the Wi-Fi and had loads of noise going on in the background. So I haven't had, I haven't had a chance to record this. Um, and the game was done probably about three weeks ago at this point, so um, I do apologise in advance if my commentary is bad because I really cannot remember what happened in this game other than the outcome. Um, so let's just quickly go over my team because I know I'm not doing anything like a team builder. Um, I will leave a link to it in PokePaste below um, just so you guys can read it at your own leisure but just sort of like a brief overview um, we have got the ghastly which is choice scarf with shadow ball sludge wave giga drain and psychic um, he does have the threat of chlorophyll mons because he does have vulpix um, and I believe choice scarf ghastly um, with the, the the EVs I have can outspeed anything in the Sun unless it's a chlorophyll choice scarf um, Bulbasaur, but that really can't do anything to my Ghastly. And Ghastly as a whole to his team just doesn't number. Um, next up, we've got the Assault Vest Timber. Yes, I received a comment on my week one game. We're not allowed to use uh, Eviolite, by the way, which is why I'm using the Assault Vest on my Timber. Um, but we've got um, Mock Punch, Knock Off, Ice Punch, Dream Punch. Again, Timber having a really nice matchup this week just with its uh, its uh, priority in Mock Punch. And it's sort of, you know, all the moves it has can hit really hard uh, on my opponent's team. Um, I haven't even said who my opponent is. It's Alec. Oh, I'm going to say this completely wrong. Bear with me two seconds. It's Alec Tech 9. Um, German PokeTuber, actually. So uh, make sure you go check him out if that's your, your native tongue. Um, next up, we've got Apom, which is Seed Bomb, U-Turn, Tail Slap, Fire Punch with the Fire Room Z. Um, I can't remember what the Fire Room Z was for. Um, next up we've got Life Orb Amora with Snow Warning, basically so I can stop his Sun shenanigans if he wants to bring Sun. Uh, Blizzard, Dark Pulse, Thunderbolt, Ancient Power, again really nice coverage for his team. Um, next up we've got Max Spadef, uh, Tentacle with Black Sludge, Skull, Toxic, Rapid Spin, Sludge Wave, coverage comes to his team really nicely. And then finally we've got uh, a special defensive Hippopotas as well. Um, with Sand Force, no Sand Stream this time, um, I've got Snow Warning to stop that. I, honestly thought he wouldn't bring Sun uh, because I do have two other setters so I could change that um, but I've got Earthquake, Crunch, Slack Off and stuff like that's it he has a Bronzor um, which is why I'm bringing Crunch on this over Raw and as you'll see Raw, not having Raw rather, is going to uh, bite me in the butt but yeah like I said there is going to be a link to uh, Pokepaste in the description below which will have um, all of the uh, EVs and, and, and stuff like that um, just quickly going over uh, text team, we've got the Omanyte, Null, um, Vulpix, Cutie Fly, Squirtle, and Makuhita. Um, I kind of expected most of these. Um, if he didn't bring Makuhita, like Amora just does a number to the team. Um, I feel like on matchup though, we've got a really good chance of uh, being able to do well uh, in this game. So, um, my opponent is going to lead off with the Omanyte, that is fine. I'm going to lead off with my Apom because it's one of the best leads I'd say in the league um, or in the format. Um, I'm going to click Seed Bomb turn 1. I don't know if he's going to expect me to have it, but Seed Bomb's quite a good bring on my behalf because he's got two water types. Um, and it does way less than I thought it would, considering it's quite effective. Um, and he goes for one layer of spikes. So I've got really nice damage off turn 1. I have got Rapid Spin on my Tentacool. I can Rapid Spin against the Cutie Fly, uh, or even this thing potentially, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm going to click U-Turn here because... Um, I don't expect him to stay in. If I was a real man, I could have clicked Tail Slap, but I don't know if he has any Rocky Helmet users at this point. Um, and I think it's going to become a common occurrence for people to bring Rocky Helmet against me purely because of Apom. Um, so I switch out into my Amora here, trying to scare him off. And I can take a hit because I'm the Rock type. That does help me with that Fire typing. Um, if he has Solar Beam, he has Solar Beam. If this thing gets Solar Beam, I'm assuming it does. Um, but he does get buffeted by the Hail. So this thing's already lost 25% and his Omanites are less than half. So it's really good. Um, here, the Hypnosis actually kind of just screws me over for the whole game. Um, really wasn't expecting it. We spoke about this after the game. He said he literally bought it just for the chance of getting sleep. So that was really frustrating because if he didn't hit that there, this Vulpix is dead. He has no sun for the rest of the game. And it's one thing that's gone on his team. However, he now gets a free switch into this Makita, and I'm like, well, 
because I've got specially defensive hippo. Um, this thing, I, I don't really have any switch ins. Um, I'm gonna have to go into hippo because hippo is my best answer to this thing. Um, and I'm just gonna have to start clicking earthquake to do as much damage to this as possible because actually Makuhito is turning out to be a bit of an issue to my team. Um, he does go for the close combat and that does like half, which is actually disgusting. Um, because like I said, I'm spadef and not fizz death. And because of the hail, I'm pretty sure I'm in another, in, I'm actually in range, sorry, of um, dying to another close combat. My opponent can't necessarily tell that, or it's either a roll, so he's going to switch. Plus, he doesn't want to take damage on this thing because it can't recover any health, and Earthquake isn't going to be doing too much damage. Um, here I do click Slack off in the off chance that he did switch, or I do live, which he does, um, which is fantastic. But obviously, I'm now going to be forced to switch out here. Like, while I am especially defensive, I think like a, a Surf might kill me, depending on his spread. Um, but I could pos well, I could have possibly stayed in there and clicked Earthquake and potentially taken this thing out. It would probably live because it's quite obviously bulky, as you could see with the Seed Bomb damage. Um, however, he does set up a second layer of Spikes, so Spikes are now becoming a bit of an issue. Um, doesn't really bother me with Ghastly around because obviously I can be immune to those. Um, he's going to switch out there because he doesn't want to take the Drain Punch, of course. And uh, in comes the Squirtle. Um, I'm going to click Drain Punch because I'm like, well... Uh, if, if he just want to show me his Rocky Helmet user, I'll get loads of health back anyway, and I won't take that much from the Rocky Helmet. Um, and we do actually find out this Squirtle is the Rocky Helmet user, which is fine, so I'm just going to take my chance here and click Knock Off. Um, that's great, I get rid of his Rocky Helmet, so now I'm like, okay, Apom is in the clear once his uh, Scarf is gone. However, he has Counter, and um, this causes me to have a bit of a brain fart moment. Obviously, he went last that turn. I was like, yeah, he's got counter, but, but, you know, he went after me, I'll win, I'll win the speed. Even though I'm not speed invested, so it should have just clicked in my head. And then it turns out he has Zen Headbutt. Like, no man would ever predict that, so really nice prep on uh, Tech's behalf there. Um, but I am now going to go into Apom. Uh, he's going to protect, and I'm going for the Seed Bomb. Now here, this is either a fantastic play on Tech's behalf, or just a completely bad play, which just works out in his favour. Because I clicked Seed Bomb there. Um... I don't know if he's trying to sack off his um, his Omanyte here, or if he predicts me to go for Tail Slap, but actually he reveals he's got two Rocky Helmet users. So um, basically I'm nearly going to kill myself with Apom, um, because I click Tail Slap again. Seed Bomb would have killed that Squirtle, Seed Bomb would have killed this thing. Um, but I, I, I click Tail Slap, I'm going to click Seed Bomb this turn and take this thing out. Um, so no more hazards for him. But my Apom's near enough useless, uh, unless I'm able to actually get Rapid Spin off with my Tentacle. So that's a real bummer for me, and he does now go into his Vulpix, which kind of confirms it's a Choice Scarf. Vulpix. Um, I think here I do switch out with Apom, um, in the hope that... Oh no, I don't know, I leave it to, uh, to, to die. Um, this thing does reveal the extra sensory, which is obviously for the Tentacle. Um, so Tentacle really isn't the safest switching at this point, but I'm going to go into my own Gengar and reveal that I am kind of Scarf myself. He really hasn't got a switch into this Gengar. Um, not Gengar, Flippin' Egg, Ghastly. Um, so he's going to sack off his uh, his Squirtle. He can't switch in Makita, which I think is actually Max Spadef Assault Vest. He might have been able to switch it in, but obviously if I go for Shadow Ball and get the Spadef drop, then two Shadow Balls are more than likely going to kill, because I am modest. Max Special Attack. Now in comes the Makuhita. I'm not going to want to take a knockoff, so I'm going to switch out into my Hippo, I believe. Um, I think I can take, potentially, a knockoff and then a close combat, even with the spikes up. Um, we'll soon find out. Yeah, I can indeed. Um, and he's not going to continuously want to, he's not going to want to take damage on this thing continuously, because like I said, it's his check to Amora. Um, in comes Q to fly. I click Earthquake here, which is is quite lucky for me because this thing just gets free set up if I don't. And this is where having Crunch over Raw kind of bites me in the bum a little bit. Um, because if I had Raw, I'd probably just stay in and click it this turn because um, I don't want him setting up. But actually, because I don't, I'm forced to switch out here and I'm going to go into my uh, into my Tentacle. Um, now, my opponent does just click Energy Ball at this point, And it's really not going to do too much to me because Tentacle is a fat thing and I love it. Um... He's going to switch out here. Now, I'll talk about it later on because we do see something later on, which I didn't even know Cute if I could do. Um, which is bad considering I have a Robombi in another league. Um, he does make the play into his um, Vulpix, which is interesting because if I'd clicked Scald there, it would have still done some decent damage to this thing. But I do click Toxic trying to predict the Makuhitas come in. 
I don't care if Makuhita is guts. I'm thinking it's thick fat at this point. But if it's guts, I really don't care. I just want to weaken that thing down and down to the point where Ghastly can just win the game on its own by clicking Shadow Ball. Um, but I'm now going to switch out because I need Tentacool to be as healthy as possible for that Q to fly. I'm going to go into a Mora here and just kind of hope I can wake up at some point. Um, I do get the Snow Warning, so the Toxic and the Hail is going to be weakening this Vulpix down quite nicely. Um, and as it's his Choice Scarf running at that speed, well, everything apart from Ghastly, of course. Um, it'd be quite nice to get this thing gone now. He goes for extra sensory because obviously he is expecting me to stay in potentially uh, with Tentacool. Um, but I'm actually able to chew it. I do stay asleep, however, he does switch out this turn. He could have killed me with another extra sensory, like a crit or something. But I do actually wake up and I go for the Ancient Power, um, hoping for all those boosts, and I don't get it. And this is where I kind of figure out. I mean, the way he was playing this thing, I kind of figured it was like Assault Vest anyway. Or at least specially defensive, um, but that does absolutely nothing, and that's Life Orb Stab. I know it's resisted, but that's that's gross. So I'm going to switch out into Pop-Tart here and just kind of sack this thing off. He does go for the Bullet Punch, which is why I was predicting, which is why I didn't stay in. Because now Mora's awake, um, it can do a huge chunk to the rest of his team that he's got alive. Um, so I did want to keep that thing. Uh, I'm going to click the Slack Off here, I believe. Um, if I had click Earthquake here, this game would have been completely different. I'm not sorry I go for Stealth Rocks because actually I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, Vulpix and Cutefly are still alive. I figured he might want to try and kill my Hippo off with the Makuhita, but he actually does pull a uh, switch into this thing, which is rather nice. Um, here I'm going to have to click Earthquake because I want to get damage, and then he Quiver Dances, and that's game because um, this thing is guaranteed to be, to be faster than my Ghastly, even if I'm timid max speed because Cutefly is a higher base speed. This is where if I have Roar over Crunch, but I prepped for Bronzor because I really thought that thing would come, um, but it didn't. Um, so now Hail stopped, uh, Earthquake didn't kill this thing, and it outspeeds my whole team. I'm like, okay, yeah, you can kill me with this thing, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to go into my Tentacle. This is then when I realise it gets Psychic, and I'm like, okay, well, I can live a Psychic. Completely uh, even at plus one with this HP investment. However, what I didn't click like throughout the whole game was that he didn't have an item. Um, and turns out this cutie fly is the psychic. And um, that is going to kill my tentacle. I don't think there was any hope in me living this. Maybe if I had a bit more health there was a chance, but I think at the range of health I had, I was, it was guaranteed dead at this point. Um, I could have tried to switch out there to play, uh, to debate it, but it didn't even cross my mind. Um, so now all I've got is Gengar, I believe, and Amora left, and both are outspared, and this guy, I mean, they can just kill me, um, with, with, you know, Psychic and Energy Ball, and, and win the game, so, um, rather unfortunate loss, because I did feel like it was quite even up until this point, like, it's a 4-0 loss, yes, but all of his team, apart from Nummel, were, like, weakened quite a lot, um, and Nummel wasn't really that scary for me, um, even with the sun up, like it doesn't get chlorophyll or anything, and I'm pretty sure Shadow Ball from Ghastly would have probably just killed that thing. Um, so it's a shame that, you know, he did get the chance to set up. It, it means he did win 4 0, but it was a closer 4 0 than it might look. So, um, yeah, that's the game, guys. Um, we do lose 4 0, and we are now 0 and 2. Um, I'm going to throw a John out there and say, look, um, I played this about three weeks ago, just before I went away on holiday. I played seven league games in about five days, so. Um, yeah, I wasn't really in the best frame of mind, but um, never mind, uh, it's a game after all, and this is just a bit of a fun league as it is. So um, yeah, guys, make sure you check out all the links below my Twitter, um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, check out Tech's uh, Twitter and YouTube below, and all the other coaches actually, if I remember to put them in there. Um, but guys, thank you for watching this video, and I will see you next time. Bye!